yo. I'm gonna be telling you about the time I got jumped. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. But hear me out. Right after that, I got my get backs. Let's get this shit started, man. All right, so boom. This happened around spring. You know, the weather was nice and breezy. Feel what I'm saying? A splendid time to play ball. I live in the project. Some people like to call it the hood. I don't blame them. Although the trees were colorful, may look nice, and things of that nature. But as I taught you in my first video, do not judge a book by its cover. For example, whenever I get lost and I'm trying to find my way back home, I pull up Google Maps on my phone and put my address on there so I can find my way back home. You know, the baby. And every time I put in my address, I see this imaginary, nice, comfortable, very appealing spot that just doesn't exist. Every day I'm dodging poop all over the floor. There's a certain area on a pathway to my apartment that just smells like rotten eggs. Piss in the elevator damn near every day. It's just not a very nice area as the pictures on Google Maps make it. So one day, I decided to you know go outside go put in some work so maybe i could possibly make it to the nba you feel me like what black kid didn't have hoop dreams i right, so boom i get all my shit together with the whoop whoop i let my mom know i'm headed towards the courts one thing leads to another and i'm in a game since the weather was nice everybody was outside all the ladies the gentlewomen's the senoritas were outside making tiktoks and shit and if there is one thing you know about niggas, is that when the ladies are watching, they instantly go into fight mode. Yo, bro. Game was 15 to 15. Next bucket win. I'm over here putting work with my three points, you feel me? Okay, okay. I know that's not really much, but when you take in the fact that the rim was 9.9 .9 inches, it's like, how does anybody play with such ridiculous circumstances? Trust me, real hoopers know. Alright, so look at here. The guy I was guarding had the ball, right? He tries to ice on me, but that shit didn't work. Why? Cause I'm a lot demon, bro. He then calls for not one, but two screens. This nigga is trash. But like I said, I'm a lot demon. I slip through those two screens like fingers in the asshole and block his dumb ass when he tries to go for a lay. So tell me why, tell me why this buffoon goes ahead and calls foul. Bro, that shit ruined my whole mood. I was not having any of it, bro. I was tight. I hate when niggas call any little foul because it's like why even play but because the whole other team knew each other and were actually close from what i saw they favored his call and my teammates were just nowhere to be found but i did not care i was not backing down one thing leads to another and i end up throwing the frank at him one of them i don't remember who it was was about to fight me but his friends told him to chill and they seemed to be planning something i couldn't really make out what they were saying because it was a little bit far. So then the game ended and I was just not in the mood. It was getting late. So you feel what I'm saying? I subbed out and I went about my way. All right. So I grabbed the water, paid for it, and was on my way. And as I'm taking my little shortcut to my crib, you know, the area was dark. The lamp was turned on. So I'm just trying to get my ass back home. You feel what I'm saying? And if you know, you know. I'm walking, right? Usually I have my AirPods on, but... In the corner of my eye, I see him niggas. Out of worry, I took out my AirPods, and as soon as I was about to put my shit in my case, I get right hooked. I get right hooked to my dome, and as I'm trying to recover, I get snuck with another hook to my abdomen. At this point, I'm thinking it's all over. My dreams of becoming a rapper, having intercourse with many women, getting them pregnant, and then end up paying child support is fading. But God said it wasn't my time to go and gave me the strength to run away. They didn't believe in us. God did. I got back home and I'm just sitting on my chair thinking over life. My mom was sleeping so she didn't see the blood on my head. I didn't even let her know because I didn't want her to feel sadness of cause of me. So I'm just contemplating life, feeling sorry for myself. After, I don't know, five minutes, I picked myself up and realized there was only one thing I had to do. I have to go back to Antarctica and ask for advice. They didn't use phones, so I had no way of contacting them. If you don't have the slightest clue on what I'm talking about, in the description, there will be a series of videos explaining my trips to Antarctica. So watch those after this video. With that being said, let's get right back into it. Ah, right, so boom. Ah, shit. Here we go again. Woo, woo, woo. I told my mom, staying over at my friend's house. You know, giving any excuse to do what I gotta do. I got my shit together. Ah, ah, ah. I'm at the airport now. But this time, when I reached the airport, there was like 10 bodyguards. Who am I? Nico Armalado? On the contrary, I'm always two steps ahead. Since I knew what they wear, I was able to obtain a fit just like theirs. 
I can't tell y'all how I got it because if I do, I would have to tell y'all how I paid for it. I ran up to one, one by one, and told him there was an emergency. I can't really remember where I told him, but that shit worked though. I don't know why they didn't just question me not going to the spot I told him to. So skip past a little, I got all the bodyguards together and they were all standing at the spot confused. One of the bodyguards, who was a female by the way, asked me, what problem? She said more than that, but I ain't trying to get demonetized. But this was good because that made me realize she a freak. I told them there is absolutely no problem going on. Before they was about to spaz on me, I bring out the Henny bottle. Oh, oh, it was over. One thing leads to another and we over here getting lit. Also, the spot I chose was a ping pong spot that just so happened to be there. And yes, we are indeed playing beer ping pong. Because I play with balls a lot, I was hitting shot after shot. These idiots were getting drunker by the minute. Boom, boom, boom. You would've thought I was getting my back blown out with all these fast paced buckets. After making these suckers drink so much honey, I booked it to the airplane and dipped. This time, I didn't need Google Maps. The progress is unreal. Feel what I'm saying? So boom, I'm in Antarctica and landing next to my niggas. Had to blast that apology on a wave, feel what I'm saying? Already, the wolves I was cool with were just chilling, awaiting for my return. Once I got on the ground, just straight good vibes, you feel what I'm saying? How you doing? This, that, and the third. After a minute of just chopping it up, I told them about what happened. And they were immediately ready to scrap, howling and shit. I told them to chill. And I told them I needed to confront this on my own because how will I ever improve if I'm always getting saved? Y'all helped me the last time. Now it's time for me to grow and become a man. They eventually understood and told me about this spot up north. He said exactly this. There's an old man who allegedly fought a hundred men in his lifetime and even trained the leader of the wolves. He didn't join us in the war because he believed that this was our fight. Ask the leader of the wolves to give you a note telling you you're valid. I'll bring you over to where he's at. Alright, so he brings me to the Little the Wolf's lair, and it's an okay size room. Got the lights dimmed a little. I guess to make the area look like a lair, you see what I'm saying? However, he got some music playing, and it's not the type of music you expect. Son is playing Shot Clock by LMA. Song's a banger, but not what I was expecting. As soon as I was about to get closer, I can see this nigga mouthing the words, writing in a diary. I don't know. I guess he heard me get closer. And he immediately turned the music off and asked me, What the, what the hell do you want? Yo, I'm trying to meet with the nigga up north. Can you write me a note telling him to train me? This nigga gonna say, Sensei Echigawa. I haven't talked to him ever since that tea party. What business do you want with him? I said, listen up. I don't have much time to explain, but I need him to train me for an upcoming war in my city and I need to do this alone. I know you understand. Honestly, I was just trying to say anything because his lair stank. He said, I bet, what can you do for me? At first, I'm like, what the hell is he talking about? Then I remembered what he told me the last time we talked. Then I said, listen, I can give you the sauce to win over the leader of the penguins. He was instantly with it and he wrote me a note. In exchange, I gave him a tablet I brought with me and put him onto Taekwondo. If you know, you know, simp. At first he was skeptical, you know what I'm saying? Wolves don't be on YouTube like that. But I told him to trust the process and I went about my way. Boom, I let the wolf know who put me on. I got the letter. One thing led to another. I'm on a mountain and it's snowing OD. I can barely see shit. There was a Japanese looking at Shaq. Can't curse because YouTube going demonetizing me. You feel what I'm saying? The wolf told me good luck and got up out of there. Ain't gonna lie, I was re questioning my decision to pop out at this hell trap of a house. But as a wise man once told me, get back. If I was to turn back, I wouldn't be able to face myself in a mirror. Well, I also didn't own a mirror at the time because I kept throwing my controller at it whenever I lost the game of 2K. Besides the point, I grabbed my balls and knocked on that door. He go, what the hell does a human want with me? No, I don't have any chicken. Leave at once. I ignored the chicken part. I said, I got into an altercation back where I'm from and I need you to trade me. This old geezer going to say, who the hell do you think you are? I don't care about your troubles. Get your ass on, boy, before I make you. At this point, I'm just ready to give him the towel and just get my ass back home. So I decided to just give him the note. And if that didn't work, I'm just going to go back home empty handed and probably beat my meat. I hand over the note and he stares at the paper. I had confused. 
He said, how did you get my son to trust humans? Did you capture him? I said, nah, we cool. Mind you, we're still outside and I was cold as hell at the time. So I'm just trying to get this shit over and begin my get back. He says, my son, he hasn't been talking with me ever since. What happened was, I cut him off right there. Listen, whatever drama y'all got going on does not concern me. You teach me what I need to know and I'll help you with your problem. Finally, he agreed and we got straight into it. Boom, bow, retraining and shit, teaching me about Southpaw, Logan Paul, all the fighting positions, making me do planes. Bro, when I tell y'all, bro, when we finished, I felt like a whole different animal and the same beast. I felt like Iron Fist. By the way, where the hell did Iron Fist go? I haven't seen an episode since 1999. Bro, I've been waiting for a return and it never came back. Ain't gonna lie, that girl in the show was bad, you feel me? She was my celebrity crush type shit. So boom, similarly, for the leader of the wolves, I gave him a tablet I stole from my friend's house, and this time, I put him on to Humzy, you feel me? So one thing leads to another, I say my goodbyes to my niggas, and I head my ass back home, ready to commence my plan. As usual, I get to my landing gear and land like a pro. My landing was so good, I only broke the two right side wheels. Delta, here I come. I could be flying your next plane, man. Just wait. Ah, so boom. A week goes by, and I'm in my room ready. I get my shit together. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, I'm back at the courts again. These niggas, bro. When I tell you, these niggas had the most disgusting look on their face, but I was not phased. Word. I get on that court after calling for next. And it was a straight murder between the legs crossover into the nutmeg play, wrap around and then out dribble three. I was cooking. They could not hold me. They could not hold me. Then I demolished one of the niggas by taking his ankles like the boogeyman. Someone's on the floor holding his leg like a baby. And I almost damn near posterized the nigga. The look on their face, got it, bro. I should have taken a picture. So boom. The part y'all been waiting for, you know what I'm saying? I'm feeling good and shit. You guys have to understand what that old geezer put me through was hell. But hard work pays off and I have officially claimed my get back. So then the same thing as before, I walk into the store, got my water, I headed home, went the same route, and then them niggas were outside again. This time without one guy since his ankles were broken by yours truly. This time, I had my AirPods on transparency mode and music off so I can hear his footsteps. And because of this, I heard a nigga behind me stomping and shit. But as J. Code once said, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, eat my dick. I bet my knees and ran my ass back home. You crazy? You think I'm fighting four niggas at once? You must have lost your damn mind. All in all, I like to tell my stories and hope that people will take lessons from them and apply it to their life. And I want y'all to know that y'all are not alone. Many people have gone through similar situations. So, where am I going with this? The moral of the story, of course. And the moral of the story is, be a different animal, but the same beast. I peace.